Hey friends, welcome to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Ben. Well, I just saw Solo, a Star Wars story a few days ago, and I thought it was fantastic. One of my favorite Star Wars movies, no matter whether it is the George Lucas or the Disney era. And no wonder it was written by Lawrence Kasdan, the writer of arguably the best Star Wars movie, The Empire Strikes Back, and his son, John Kasdan. Some simply dismiss this movie as fan service, but come on, I'm a fan, I want to be serviced. Anyway, what I really want to talk about in this video is the differences between the new canon story portrayed in the film and the earlier legend stories about Han Solo's childhood and backstory that we had before. Just a minor warning, there will be some small spoilers and this will try to keep them minimum, but if you haven't seen the movie yet, you perhaps just watch with caution. Okay, let's begin. Childhood. In both stories, Han was born on Corellia and he was either orphaned or his parents weren't around. In Legends, he was raised by Garrus Shrike, a character kind of like the artful dodger from Oliver Twist, who led a gang of child criminals. In the run-up to the release of Solo, many fans thought that Woody Harrelson would be playing Garrus Shrike, or after the name of his character Beckett was revealed, people thought he would be playing a similar character that played the same function. Harrelson also hinted at this kind of thing in interviews he did in the run-up to the release of the movie. Can we say who you're playing, or do you, you're not allowed to say that either? It's very secret of these films. Uh, yeah, I play a guy named Beckett who's kind of a criminal and a mentor to Han. <laughs> But it's not quite like what fans imagined. In the movie, Han is part of a gang of children and young adults led by Lady Proxima, who's really not that ladylike. No, even worse than that. She's a giant slug. In Legends, Han is picked up by Shrike at a Karelian spaceport, and in the movie, Han ends up at the spaceport, but joins the Empire there instead after seeing an advert playing on a screen. Love interest. In both Legends and Canon, Han has a love interest. In Legends, it is Bria Theron, a human female from a wealthy family on Corellia. But things go a little bit wrong for her after she attends a self-help seminar. No, not that one. It was the exaltation ritual that we talked about in an episode a few weeks ago in which these kind of space cows called Tilanda Till would subject humanoid species to their mating call. The effect on humanoids was like that of hard drugs such as cocaine or heroin. Theron got hooked and sold all her jewelry to fund her trip to the planet of Yalesia, where the cult was based. But sadly, it was all a front for a spice processing operation run by the Hutt cartel, and the exaltation was just a way of luring potential slaves in to come and work processing spice in order to get their next fix. One of Han's first jobs was on the Alicia, and it was Han who exposed the operation and helped Theron escape. They then fell in love. But sadly, Theron suffered withdrawal symptoms from the mating call and later left Han to join the Rebel Alliance. In the new movie, Han is also plagued by the tragic story of separation from his first love. Kira and him grew up together on Corellia as part of Lady Proxima's gang. Just like in the Legends story, Han helps her escape Proxima, but she is then abducted by members of another gang, that of Dryden Voss, the main villain of the movie. She then becomes basically enslaved by him. And just like sex slaves who are marked by their masters. Tattoo on your wrist is Macau's sex trade. You belong to one of the houses. Kira has Dryden Voss's symbol branded or tattooed on her wrist. And because she is Dryden's girl, she can't get back with Han, and this causes tension throughout the movie. So in both the Legends and Canon backstories, Han is unlucky in love. We won't talk about how the story between Han and Kira ends, because I don't want to spoil it for people, but there is speculation amongst fans that if they make a sequel to Solo, Kira may come back as a villain in the movie, or she may be in the Boba Fett movie. Amelia Clark, who plays Kira, is signed on for multiple movies. Meeting Chewbacca. In both versions of the story, Han saves Chewbacca's life, but in slightly different ways. In the Legends version, a bunch of Wookiee children escape from Imperial slavery with the help of Chewbacca, who is injured and captured after the incident. This is while Han was working for the Empire. Han's commanding officer tells him to skin Chewbacca alive, to which Han refuses. For his disobedience, Han's commanding officer sends both him and Chewbacca as slaves to Coruscant to work on the new wing of the Imperial Hall of Heroes. Chewie becomes enraged and attacks the commander, who draws his blaster on the Wookiee, but Han steps in and stuns the commander and lets Chewie escape. Han is then discharged dishonorably from the Imperial military, and Chewie regards it as a life debt and vows to always be by Han's side. 
In the new movie, Han saves Chewie in a different way, which does lead to Chewie remaining by Han's side, maybe considering it a life debt, although this is never mentioned in the film. It also happens during the time when Han is fighting for the Empire as an infantry soldier, even though he was trained as a pilot. He gets accused of deserting and as a punishment is thrown into a pit to be devoured by what is described as the beast. So well done Disney, you've made Chewbacca into a cannibal now. Anyway, Han luckily knows a bit of Wookiee language which kind of plays back to the idea in Legends of Han spending a period of time with Wookiees as a child and he's able to negotiate with Chewbacca and hatch a plan to escape together. Relationship with Lando and winning the Falcon. In Legends, Han became best friends with Lando when he was already working as a smuggler. He even taught him how to fly the Millennium Falcon and liked the ship so much that he didn't think Lando deserved to have it. Around this time, Han had his own ship, the Bria, a modified Starmite class freighter, obviously named after his previous love interest. When the Bria was destroyed by Imperial fighters, Han entered a Sabak tournament on Cloud City and beat his best friend Lando in the final, winning the Millennium Falcon. In Legends, neither of the two cheat. In the new movie, it is somewhat different. Han and Lando are never really good friends. They're sort of acquaintances, perhaps even rivals. So this is, uh, Sabak? Sabak. Sabak. You happen to notice that freighter down there? You know what's on it? About 30 hired guns. All I gotta do is give them the signal, you're surrounded. Yep, that was Han's good pal Lando in that ship taking off right there. Han actually wins the Millennium Falcon off Lando the first time they meet, but Lando pulls an extra card out of his sleeve, turns the tables and wins the game. Han then finally wins the ship for real off of Lando at the end of the movie in another game of Sabat after he first disables Lando's sleeve mounted card dispenser. Both of these Sabat games are on unnamed planets and not on Cloud City like in Legends. We also find out that what Rey says about the Millennium Falcon in The Force Awakens may have some truth to it. This is a ship that made the Kessel Run in 14 parsecs. 12! 14. Turns out Han rounded the number down to 12, so it may have actually been closer to 13. Okay guys, those are some comparisons and differences between the Legends story and the new canon backstory from the new movie Solo A Star Wars Story. It is a great film, if you have seen it please leave your comments and thoughts below. As always please subscribe if you are new, give this video a like and if you are watching this, you are Generation Tech.